So in this video, we'll go through a bunch of completing the square problems, all the way from like the simplest you can get uh, to the most complicated that you're going to see. And we're going to show you how to deal with all of these. So we're going to do two things in these. One is find vertex form, which is really just a fancy way of saying complete the square. So we're going to complete the square on these four. The other thing we're going to do is find the roots. And all that find the roots means is you take the equation, you set it equal to zero, and you solve. And that's finding the roots. So those are really the two most common things you're asked to do uh, when completing the square. So let's go ahead and get to it. So the first one is x squared plus 4x minus 2. So remember, when you complete the square, the first step is to go ahead and take the number next to the x. For us, that's plus 4. Take half of it. That makes it be plus 2. And you fill it in with the square. Then whatever number you've got at the end, just leave it out front. Don't touch it. The very last thing now is to take whatever number we just did, plus 2 squared, and do the opposite. Do minus 2 squared. You don't really need the parentheses here, but just to make it clear, that's the exact same thing I'm copying over. Okay, so actually we've done most of the hard work at this point. All we need to do now is a little bit of algebra to clean things up. So this becomes minus 2 minus 4, so that's the same thing as saying x plus 2 squared minus 6. And there we go, we completed the square. And we've written it in vertex form. So from here, you could use, you could graph with that. Uh, we're gonna show in a second, you could use that to solve. Really, this is the starting point for doing a lot of other things in algebra. Okay, so let's go ahead and find the roots now. So what finding the roots means is you take this equation and you set it equal to zero and you solve. So it doesn't hurt real quickly to talk about why do we need to complete the square to find the roots here. After all, can't we just factor it? You may think like, can I do one of these deals, right? The foiling kind of factor. But the problem is there's no numbers that multiply to negative two and add up to four, right? The only thing that multiplies to two is one times two, and you're not gonna make that add up to four anyway. So that doesn't work. Okay, well, so the other thing is you might say, fine, but how about I move the two to the other side, right? I could do x squared plus four x equals two. But now you're stuck, because at this point you can't go any further with that. You can't get a single x on the left. So that doesn't work either. So what you need to do is either complete the square or use the quadratic equation. In fact, if you see my video quadratic equation from scratch, you'll know that using the quadratic equation really is the same thing as completing the square. Okay, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Okay, so we've already completed the square on the other side there, so I'll just go ahead and copy that down here. And now we can just add the 6 to the other side. That's the first step. Once you get to there, I want to get rid of this square, so I'm going to square root both sides. And on the left, the square and the square root cancel. Make sure when you do a square root, you put a plus or minus. You really can put the plus or minus on either side, but it's just much simpler to put it over here. And then I lastly just subtract my two over to the other side. And there we go. We used completing the square to solve for x. And that's it. Okay, let's go ahead and go on to the second one. Okay, so the next one is x squared minus 3x minus 3. So this one is a little bit trickier just because the number in the middle, right? The first step is to go ahead, take the number in the middle, and take half of it. Well, it's a little annoying here because the number in the middle is odd. So, taking half of 3 is, well, 3 halves. You can write things as decimals. Uh, the only problem is once you start having to square decimals, that's harder to do in your head, whereas squaring fractions is very easy to do in your head. Okay, so I have a new negative 3 halves squared, so I need to also subtract negative 3 halves squared. Okay, so again, we've done all the hard work. Now we're just doing some algebra to clean things up. So at this point, I can go ahead and do that. 3 squared is 9, 2 squared is 4, and I can just go ahead and get common denominators to do the rest of my algebra here. So common denominator 4, take 3, multiply it by 4 to get 12 over 4, and now I can go ahead and just combine those two fractions to get me 21 over 4. And there we go. We got the vertex form. Okay, let's go ahead and use that then to find the roots. So again, finding the roots just means taking the equation, 
and setting equal to zero and solving. Step one for this is to go ahead and complete the square, which we already did. The next step in solving now is to take the planal number 21 fourths, move it over to the other side. And again, just like last time, I'm going to go ahead and take a square root on both sides to get rid of that square. So once I do that, I get there we go. And we can actually clean that up a little before we go further, right? Because the square root of 4 is just 2. So there we go. Looks like that. And I can add the 3 halves to the other side. That's nice because now I've already got common denominator. So it saves me a step by doing that. And again, you know, even if you haven't watched my video about how uh, the quadratic equation, where that comes from, all it comes from is completing the square. And that kind of shouldn't be surprising when you look at the answer I got. That looks exactly like the answers you get when you use the quadratic equation. So that's a good video to watch if you haven't seen it yet. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Okay, so this one's a little harder now because we've got a number in front. But we'll see that numbers in front really are not that bad. And again, I made a whole video about this. You can check that out if you want to. In this video, we'll just go through the steps to do it. So the first step is any number you've got in front, just take it out. Just factor it out. I know it doesn't come nicely out of every term. In fact, this 5 right here, right, it leaves us with the fraction 5 halves. But I think this is the simplest way is just to take it out and not worry about that. Because the point is, once you take it out, the thing in the middle here, x squared plus 2x minus 5 halves, it does not have a number in front. So all you're doing with that now is completing the square exactly the same way we've done for the last two problems. So I take half of positive 2, which is positive 1. I keep my 5 halves here. I have a new 1 squared. I also need to subtract 1 squared. And now it's just the same as the last ones. So on the inside here, we get minus 5 halves minus 1. If I got common denominators, that would be minus 7 halves. And lastly, now I've got this 2 out front. I want to give the 2 back to both of my terms. So if I do that, distribute it back in, I get the 2 in front of the x plus 1 squared. And here I get 2 times 7 halves. So 2 times 7 halves, that's nice. That's something that could be made much prettier. It just becomes minus 7 because the 2s cancel. And there we go. We again wrote out the vertex 4. Okay, so with that, let's go ahead now and find the roots. So we start out with this equation set equal to 0. Okay. We complete the square, which we already did. So we just copy that on to the next line and set it equal to 0. Again, now it should be some pretty straightforward algebra. Move the 7 over, divide by 2. I'm going to go ahead and do both of those steps at 1. So I add over the 7 and then I divide by 2. Take my square root on both sides. Once I do that, I get x plus 1 equals plus or minus root 7 over 2. Uh, no simplifying I can do with that square root there, so that's the best that's going to look. And I go ahead and move over my 1. And once again, we found the roots. Okay, let's go on to the very last one here. So in this one, I'm just going to do the vertex form. Because as we've seen, if you can do the vertex form, you can find the roots just easily. That's not really a problem. Um, and also, this one takes up a lot of space. So let's go ahead and ignore finding roots. Okay, so once again, let's go ahead and start by taking the number in front and factoring it out. I like to go ahead and use a square bracket, and it's just because I know I'm going to be using parentheses later. So by using a square bracket, it's easier to see what's going on. I don't have multiple parentheses around. Okay, I took out my negative 3. It's ugly, but that's okay, because again, the thing inside does not have a number in front. It does not have a leading coefficient. So I can just, on the inside, complete the square exactly like I did before. I take 7 thirds, I take half of that. What is half of 7 thirds is just 7 thirds times a half. And maybe you can do that in your head, which is great. But if not, you can just write it out as well. Okay, I keep my negative 1 third. Also, I have a new 1 half times 7 thirds squared. I need to go ahead and get rid of that. And there we go. Okay, once again, our hard work is done now. All that's left is to clean things up. 
that looks like 7 sixths squared. In here, I've got 1 third minus, again, 7 sixths squared. So let's go ahead and keep doing the algebra here. This inside part is going to stay exactly the same, including my minus 1 third. Here, I've got minus 49 over 36. Okay, let's move up to the next line now. So again, in front, I'm not changing anything there. All I really need to do now is get common denominators at the end there. So my common denominator is definitely going to be 36. So 1 third, I need to multiply it by 12. So that gives me 12 over 36 minus 49 over 36. Okay, let's go ahead and put those two together right now. So if I combine those two, that gives me minus 61 over 36. And I can go ahead and put my negative 3 back inside. So that gives me a negative 3 in front here. And a negative 3 times that. So that's great. The negative times negative gives me a positive. 3 over 36, I can cancel. That's going to give me a 12 on the bottom. And there we go. We have found the vertex form of negative 3x squared minus 7x plus 1. So I hope that helps and that makes sense. If there's things that still don't make sense with that or some steps you're not getting, please leave a comment below, let me know, and I'll be sure to help you out with that. Also, if there's more topics you'd like to see, go ahead and let me know, and I'll be sure to do those as soon as possible. All right, thanks, everyone. Have a good one.